Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our second example of how to work out a problem of projectile motion on an inclined plane. It's a little different than the first example in that we do not know the initial velocity, but we do know how far up the incline the projectile will reach, 100 meters, which means since the angle of the incline is 30 degrees, the height will be 50 meters and the horizontal distance will be 86.6 meters when the projectile lands on the incline. But the question is, what is its initial velocity? The approach is very similar to the previous example. We're going to work out the equation of kinematics, both for the y and the x direction. So starting with the y direction, we have the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half a in the y direction times time squared. Now we can assume that the initial height is zero, and of course we know that the acceleration in the y direction will be the acceleration due to gravity, and we know the value for y, because when we finally reach the final value right here, y will be 50 meters, and so we can say that 50 is equal to zero, plus the initial velocity in the y direction, which is v initial, times the sine of, and the angle here is 45 degrees, times time minus 4.9 t squared. And of course, since we know what the sine of 45 degree is, we can write this as 50 equals 0 0.707 v initial times time minus 4.9 t squared. But notice in this equation, we have two unknowns, v initial and t, which means we need a second equation. Let's now try the x direction. x equals x sub naught plus v sub naught in the x direction times time plus one half a in the x direction times time squared. But in the horizontal direction, there's no force of gravity. There's no forces at all, which means there's no acceleration. This goes to zero. And let's assume again we have zero initial distance, which means the equation simplifies the x equals v initial in the x direction, which would be v initial times the cosine of 45 degrees times time. We know what x is when it reaches the incline, 86.6 equals, well, the cosine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707 times v initial times time. This allows us to solve for v initial in terms of time and substituting that into this equation. Even though we're looking for v initial, if we substitute for time instead, it would become a very messy equation because it's a complicated quadratic equation. So it's probably easier to solve that equation for v sub naught. So we can say that v sub naught is equal to 86.6 divided by 0 0.707 times t, moving this down here underneath, turn the equation around. So we get 86.6 divided by 0 0.707 equals, and that gives us v initial equals 122. Uh, let's call it 5 over t. When we plug that in here, we get the following. And actually, you know what? We don't even need to calculate that. If we plug that in here, you can see that we can probably cancel out the 0.707. So let's go ahead and use this form of the equation. We'll get less rounding error that way. Plug that in here, we get 50 equals 0 0.707 times V sub naught, which is 86.6 divided by 0 0.707. And T, and of course that would be V sub naught, times t minus 4.9 t squared. Notice in this case that the t's cancel out, the 0.707 cancels out, and it makes it for a much cleaner equation. 50 equals 86.6 minus 4.9 t squared. Subtracting 86.6 from both sides, we get minus 36.6 equals minus 4.9 t squared. t squared equals 36.6 divided by 4.9 because we cancel both negative signs on both sides of the equation. So t is equal to the square root of 36.6 
divided by 4.9. And let's see what we get. 36.6 divided by 4.9. Take the square root. And it would be 2.733 seconds. So we're keeping an extra few decimal places to reduce the rounding error. Now that we have the time, let's see here. Well, we can now use this equation right here, because that's a simple form of the equation, to find out V initial. So we can say that V initial equals 86.6 .6 divided by 0 0.707, and multiply that times the time in the denominator, and we have 2.733 for the time. Simplify that, so we have multiply that times 0.707, bring that to the numerator, times 86.6 .6 equals, and finally we can say that V initial equals 44.82 meters per second. And realizing that the information was given either in two or three significant figures, we can say that V initial equals 45 meters per second is good enough. And that's how we find the initial velocity of projectile motion on an incline.